Hey everybody, Economic Ninja here. I hope you're doing right. We're gonna be talking about fire truck booms and highlights that divide the manufacturing uh, that's going on in America. Now, why am I talking like I'm from Boston? I don't, first off, I'm gonna tell you this. If you're a firefighter and you were expecting to watch some cool fire engine, you know, stuff, videos, um, this is about making money. And we're gonna talk to people that aren't in the service. We're gonna talk about, I don't know, I can't do it. It's like, I'm, I'm, I'm like, I'm like channeling Joey Bag of Donuts right now. Um, we're gonna talk about fire engines. The sales are off the charts, but it has nothing to do with economics, okay? So check this out. First off, I've gotta say this, this is out of Reuters. That, you see how it says fire truck? That is not a fire truck. Fire trucks have ladders, engines have pumpers. It's like saying that bottles are for babies and cylinders are for firefighters. Jeezo, all right now, normal voice, here we go. We're gonna talk about a story out of Reuters. It says the fire truck boom highlights the divide in the US manufacturing. It's all a lie, what they're gonna tell you is all lie and stupid stuff, okay? It has nothing to do with economics, it has to do with government bureau bureaucracy and crap. Um, we're gonna talk about the NFPA, we'll talk about cycles in engine uh, trans and you know how they replace fire engines and things like that all right so here we go the story because right now i don't know if you know this hey first off if you're a firefighter put a little firefighter truck emoji i know you guys know how to do it you spend way too much time on your phones um let me know down below if you're firefighters uh thank you so much chance for the super chat we're going to talk about this and talk about how a lot of this data this economic data is skewed people don't realize how economics works or how the government spends money like a drunken sailor and this whole you if you don't use it you lose it bull crap i mean that is the biggest crap ever but hey our government's high i should know i worked for them 26 years in the service all right here we go anyone looking around oshkosh's it's a fire fire engine or fire apparatus manufacturer carnivorous fire truck factory in appleton wisconsin for evidence of the longest US manufacturing slump in two decades could be forgiven for coming away scratching their heads. So just so you know, if you work at a fire uh, station, you're getting paid because you know the Eagle craps every couple weeks. Um, it's like clockwork. You might not think that something bad's happening in the economy, but there is. We have actually been in the longest slump of manufacturing. We're just like, look at all those fire emojis. Look, we got firefighters here. Um, see, hey, hopefully the cops are here. We don't want to leave them out, okay? Because remember, they, they always use that one joke. <sighs> Look, I, I don't care right now about the money part. Cops always have this one joke because we have the best joke ever. So the cops always say, well, you know, even a fireman needs a hero. And then we're supposed to go, oh, because you're our hero. Really, the best joke is, hey, at least we grew up wanting the same thing when we were kids. And they go, what? They always fall for it. They go, what? It's like, well, we always wanted to be firemen growing up. And that always gets a really good laugh on the fire side. The cop side, they get, I get a smirk. All right, here we go. Now, we're in the worst manufacturing slump in two decades. I know, it's bad. And the media's not telling us about it. It's weird. It's like, <sighs> Oh, oh, for Micton. Um, so it says right here, the delivery backlog for the companies, Oshkosh as we're talking about, the most sought after firefighting rigs now stretches into 2026, part of a record $16 billion backlog for all types of the company's trucks, which range from waste haulers and cement mixers to tow trucks and airport rescue vehicles. Oshkosh's total revenues in 2022 equaled about half of that amount. Let me, before I go on, I wanna explain something really clearly here. Our government is spending money it doesn't have. We were in a deficit. Congratulations, all your tax dollars, they need even more than that, which means they're probably gonna tax more, which means they're probably gonna hire 46,000 IRS. Oh wait, they already did that. Okay, good. Good job, Biden. Um, they're gonna go out and they're gonna get more money from you, okay? So this is why you need to start a side hustle. You need to figure out some kind of business. You need legal tax write-offs so you're not put thrown in the slammer. Um, that's why those guys carry guns so that you can save money, okay? This isn't a joke. The government wants more and more and more money. They wanna get bigger. They're the largest employer in the nation. As a matter of fact, I think that the US government is the largest employer on earth. And they are spending money like crazy. So they're buying apparatus or buying equipment and it's throwing off our manufacturing. So for the things we actually need in life, um, you know, stuff, that's actually going bad right now. People aren't buying as much because they don't have as much money, right? Because of inflation. <laughs> 
Hashtag who you would like to blame for inflation down below. All right, it says here, there may be a downturn coming, but we don't see it. That's John Pfeiffer, the company's chief executive officer, told Reuters. Well, John, you obviously don't know who your customer is. You see, your customer prints their, the, the federal government and state and local governments as well because they get money from the federal government. I know it sounds weird, doesn't it? They're printing money like crazy. It's funny money. I know it sounds crazy. There is a consequence to it. It's called inflation. And that's what's happening right now. So before it gets really expensive, let's go ahead and see the government blow up the coffers and buy more stuff. It's weird. The, the Romans did this, actually. As they were losing control of their currency, um, they started spending like drunken sailors. And at a certain point, the, at the, the money became so worthless that they couldn't even feed their army. Then they lost control. Sort of like what's happening right now. Um, our inflation is going up. Government's printing more money. They're buying a bunch of stuff. And before China and Russia take over for the new world reserve currency, the BRICS nations, we are going to see our government spend recklessly out of control to try and get um, their side in to the presidency. So it says Oshkosh illustrates a sharp divide in the factory sector. It says on the side, our companies buoyed by a historical shift in U.S. attitudes about how to grow and protect domestic industries, particularly those deemed essential to national security. You see, before you destroy your currency, you might as well buy a bunch of missiles, planes, and fire trucks. Those have ladders on the top. Again, Reuters, you got it wrong. It says here, the Biden administration has championed legislation. Championed. Hey, let me know if you think he's championed anything other than being able to walk across a room, um, including the Reflation Reduction Act and the CHIPS and Science Act funneling billions of dollars. Wait a minute, those three acts seem a lot like the Patriot Act. I bet you there's a bunch of stuff in the fine. That's why the channel's not growing. Never mind, I'll take that back. No, I won't. There's a lot of crap taking your, a uh, lot of uh, laws taking our rights. And I'm sick and tired of it. See, and that's what's so crazy. I got to go off on a little tangent right here. This is why I started the channel. You know, here as a firefighter, training fire departments all around the state. I really, you know, we weren't the busiest engine. I came from one of the busiest engines in my county back in the early 2000s. I went to one of the slowest engines. And so what I did is I wanted to highlight what we had. We had personnel with a good attitude. We had equipment. We had a great training facility. I wanted to train firefighters. But then it turned into I want to help firefighters get wealthy. And I tried counseling tons of firefighters and showing them how to get rich. And I just got a lot of rolled eyes. Um, and the fact of the matter was... Um, it, it didn't matter how smart I was or how much net worth I had. Nobody wanted to hear it, right? Uh, I guess unless I drove up in a Ferrari, then they would have listened. We found that out later. Um, but my point being is that I, I tried to help as many people. In 2017, I warned them about something that was coming uh, in our country that was going to affect the whole world. And they laughed at me. Good news. I had photos. But it still didn't matter. And so then I took this channel to the world and I said, the heck with this. If they're not going to listen, if my neighbors won't listen, if people at church won't listen... I'll just go find a bunch of crazy people on earth. And I found you guys. And when I say crazy, that's like a compliment because to most people, crazy is the very small people that act differently. They act differently. And they go, just like, that's a crazy person. Well, good news, I'm crazy. Are you crazy? Are you crazy because you believe that actually the government's out of control, spending recklessly, and they and the Fed, which are two different entities, are actually in charge, are causing the inflation? <laughs> that's crazy, you know? Why aren't you busy watching Netflix? We're crazy. So if you're crazy, type crazy down below. All right, here we go. Um, and I mean that in a, in a very sincere and nice way. Um, so they're talking here about the, 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 the Biden championing all this great crap that's just blowing up the coffers, and then it's going to literally detonate the U.S. economy. Now, it says here, a loosening of purse strings by towns and cities as they emerge from pandemic induced austerity also is driving demand for emergency and other equipment. That's actually a full on lie. Jeez, oh, people are, ah! So the, the NFPA is the National Fire, uh, Fire, oh my gosh, I'm blanking. There's so many dang, NFPA. This is what happens when you go live. We have the NFPA, we have all these different fire codes, and we have all these rules and regulations that tell us when a fire engine needs to be pulled out of service and a new one replaced, right? A certain amount of age, certain amount of equipment that, you know, certain types of equipment. We, a big uh, change in this 
was when uh, national fire standards changed to go from open cab fire engines to closed cab. And they left a caveat that if you didn't have the money, you didn't have to do it. But what happened was in a short order of like two or three years after that, all of these departments changed over to enclosed cabs. All right, well now the clock's ticking on all those because then NFPA and other uh, groups come out and they say, they're governing bodies, right? They come out and they say, here we go. Now this, you can only have an engine for this many miles or this many years, right? And then you gotta replace it. So there's this cycle. And that cycle is actually just happening right now. Also, because of drunken sailor spending on, on the part of the government, they're actually out there um, pushing more money into the municipalities uh, in the forms of uh, grants, um, there's bond measures, there's all kinds of stuff going on right now, and they're out there buying this equipment. So yeah, there's a backlog. Um, but there's something else that Oshkosh is not telling you. The reason why they have a backlog is because they've had a hard time getting parts. See, in my department and other departments, uh, they actually were told they were delayed, not only because you know people run around wearing masks or not showing up to work, or they're having a hard time hiring new people, but there are little small parts, just like what was happening with your GMC or your Ford truck with a silicon chip. So that backlog has continued this entire time. So this author is a little bit confused, uh, especially with the whole fire truck thing. But they're talking about the mixed bag. The point that I wanted to bring this story up is because they're highlighting, look, all these you know, government's doing great. They're buying all these engines, but look at manufacturing falling off a cliff. That's right, because human beings, average person that has, the average person has less than $400 in their savings account, does not have the money. So there's going to be mad, mad layoffs. So this is a great uh, uh, thing of woke reporting when Reuters is trying to point out the positive side, here's the positive, here's the positive. They're like, well, why don't you just go look at all the truth that's out there? If you wanna call it negative, fine, it's negative. So what should you do? Well, you should look at all of this stuff with sort of fine-tuned lenses. You need to look at this and go, okay, this is government money spending. This is like all of the factories they just built and they said our GDP went up. Even those factories are ghost factories. We have zombie companies right now that are not making profit by selling money, selling items, selling goods and services. They're making money by selling shares or borrowing money and keeping their company going. Total zombie companies. There's a downturn coming, so you should spend less. Um, it was funny, when I was, uh, when I was 27 years old, I became a millionaire doing real estate. I had a real estate company, went to my fire chief because we never had money, we had never had money. My fire chief at the time was not the best at budgeting. And I said, hey, why don't I help you? Now I was a firefighter at the time. I came from like, as a captain to this department. Now I was a firefighter. And he looked at me as like crazy. And I said, look, I can help you. I'm really good at budgeting. Let's, let's figure out where the downfalls are. And what I found out a long time ago is that fire chiefs were getting uh, bonuses if they came in under budget. I was messed up. And then on top of that, I found out, and, and I don't think it's messed up from a budgetary standpoint, but what happened was it was the stuff that you needed that they weren't giving you. I remember one fire chief once, true story, um, they got a free set of safety gloves as a demo from a company that wanted to sell them to us. And since our chiefs were too cheap, they, um, they wouldn't want to spend the money. They wanted to hold on for bonuses, right? Um, they put those up as a contest as a safety award. I so say, you guys disgust me. You're actually giving away safety gear um, as a, if people line up, it's like, are you kidding me? Are you high? That was my reaction. You can tell I wasn't the favorite. But my point being is that, you know, when I said, hey, my, my company's budget is larger than this department's operating budget. I'm like, I, I know how to balance a budget. You know, he just got angry rather than sitting down and going, all right, well, what would you do? You know, um, our government's ran by a bunch of people that uh, that don't know what they're doing. They're not successful in the private sector. Please understand this. Like if they, if you come out with information like this, it says the government's doing a great job. Right. Um, or that all this money is being spent in this sector, like right here, fire engines are blowing up because the government's buying them. They're drunken sailors. They have no they, they, they couldn't balance their way out of their own shoebox. I, I, I don't even know what to say. And so. The private sector is totally different than the public sector. And so I think it's really important that people realize where they're getting their information from. Is the economy blowing up over here and it's in the, uh, the, the public sector where money is just printed out of nothing? 
or is it blowing up over here in the private sector where you have to actually have a good product and have a good service to actually survive and thrive, right? All right, I hope you got something out of this. Uh, tell the firefighters, love you guys. I'm gonna miss being a firefighter. Um, hardest thing I ever have done is leaving that. I'm leaving, ninjas out. Jeez-o.